Canadian gun owners who know the stage has been set, their rights hang in the balance. A warning to Americans that the border separating them from us is just an imaginary line. Believe what's going to happen. It's coming. Uh, we've got the test waters here in Canada to prove it, and you're next on the list. If you give it an inch, you're going to lose a whole damn yard. Beware, because if it's happening here, it could happen down there. And it's pretty scary. Get off your ass and take part. Join the NRA. That's the best chance you have. If you view this problem as strictly a Canadian problem, you have your head in the sand. You have got to get behind your organizations that are defending your freedom. Without NRA, you would be sunk already. The government ruined me. They came here prepared to smash the door down and throw in stun and flash grenades. That was the plan. This is Canada? You know, this is not the Canada I know. The uh, seven million firearms owners of this country have ceased to trust its government. What's at stake is, is a freedom. It's a freedom. It's, it's, it's life. Shooters and sportsmen. Collectors and businessmen sacrificed on the altar of politics. Singled out and persecuted by government forces determined to enforce their own agenda. A Canada where only the police and military have guns. They want every firearm seized in this country. That's the long-term agenda. Once a populace doesn't have the ability to defend itself, it's no longer uh, a governed nation. It's a ruled nation. The debate is settled. The debate is over. Gun control will be implemented on December 1st. Gun control in the form of Bill C-68, demanding all gun owners register their shotguns and rifles. Right now, if you don't have a firearms license to possess the firearms you already own, by January 1st, 2001, you'll be an instant criminal. If you don't have your long guns registered by 2003, you'll be an instant criminal. Plus, 58% of the handguns registered since 1935 are now banned and must be turned in for destruction by December 1st. If not, the government now has their name and will come and get both them and their guns. They've already made up the lists. They've given them out to the local police. Why treat me, someone who hasn't done anything wrong, as though I am a criminal? And that's how I feel. Gun owners finally realizing a threat they refuse to imagine. Now rallying to repeal to stop the creeping but steady erosion of their freedom. Bill C-68 is nothing more than a move to take away our firearms. We were suckers. We sat here and trusted them. And when they took away the Benelli's, and that nobody in the handgun community ever believed that they would come after short barrel handguns. And then when they took away the short barreled handguns, no one in the hunting community believed they would come after semi-auto rifles. The goal of the present law, which has been referred to as C-68, which is now the Firearms Act in Canada, is to break the back of the shooting community. Breaking their backs by breaking their will to fight. Sadly, it's a strategy that is working and taking its toll. I've got a lot of friends that are dumping everything they own. They just feel, with all the regulations and costs involved, that it's, it's not worth their time and aggravation anymore. A new toy. Giving up and getting out, gun collectors are now surrendering a cherished right and a family heritage to what they call a democratic dictatorship. I've had Polish people say that I came to Canada because it was free. And they say, look at it, it's not free anymore. We're... we're we got a government that's climbing all over us. Are they going to walk up to the door tomorrow and say, hey, we're here to take this, this, and this, hand them over. And that just really tears me up. Now there's a shooter. But gun collectors are not alone in their anger. Gun shop owners like John Parocchio are being forced to give up their livelihood, driven out by Bill C-68. We are now at somewhere in the neighborhood of 875 or so dealerships from 6,000. You're looking at a six billion dollar industry that has that has been annihilated by uh, 
by ignorant politicians and, and absolutely pathetic firearms legislation that is no, no benefit to anybody. Come on now. A bitterness that runs deep and battle lines that reach far into the countryside. They're going to make it so that uh, uh, some of the ranchers and farmers in the area can't protect their own property. It's a freedom farmers and gun owners are not willing to forfeit. Instead, thousands are simply refusing to comply. They'll hide the guns. They'll bury them into wherever. They'll hide them in barns. They'll hire them in, in grain sheds. But they won't turn in their guns. Citizens defying the law because they no longer trust the government that passed it or the police now ordered to enforce it. As a police officer, my primary focus is to be in harmony with the public. And this law puts me at disharmony with the general public. Brian Younger, Constable Murray Grismer, a 13-year police veteran, calls C-68 a financial, unenforceable fraud, knowing the $200 million spent so far will take big cops off the street, but it will never take guns away from criminals. I don't believe for one minute that our criminals will go and register their guns, and uh, the guns will still be out on the street. The cops aren't going to know where the bad guys keep their guns. A harsh reality anti-gun politicians choose to ignore. But an ex-con and government informant we talk with knows C-68 won't stop criminals who work the streets. It's an opportunity crime, and they're going to continue doing it. And the carjackings are going to increase here. They already have a home invasion, a personal violent crime, ATMs. You ask any street cop out there, he'll tell you the same thing. You're taking the guns away from the honest people, and you're making it easier for the criminals to do the job. I could get you a gun right now in 20 minutes if you give me 50 bucks. I'd go buy a shotgun with a phone call. How are you going to stop somebody that's got it in his mind that he's going to commit a crime? What are you going to do, legislate them into morality? They're laughing. Criminals who won't turn in their guns and law-abiding citizens committed not to because free people don't register their guns. But the risk could be high, harassment and intimidation, tactics the government will use at any cost to force gun owners to comply. Let's just say that I believe strongly that we were to be used as an example to promote the new bill. A police invasion that could have turned deadly. SWAT teams armed with machine guns raided John St. Amour's mail order firearms business. And he has photos that can only begin to tell the story. You've got a helicopter buzzing the property. You've got police officers, customs people, upstairs, downstairs, trashing my house, all over the property. And we said, Tell us what you want. We'll give it to you. You don't have to tear the place apart. No, that's not the way we proceed. That's not the way we do things. They had a point to prove. They wanted to show who was boss. Seven hours of hell, and even though the government dropped the charges, John is still haunted by the horrifying images. This will escalate. If they've done it successfully at one place, then they'll do two. If they can get two, they'll do four. John, we're going to go in here today. John Bardoshia is a victim of the unlimited dangerous powers of search and seizure Bill C-68 gives to police. Now he's going to court, spending every dollar he saved to save himself from the law. John was arrested, spent four days in jail, and the charge? Leaving the frame of a pistol he was making a case for outside his safe. What happened was that there was a small fire in his garage that was quickly put out. But then the firefighters decided to look through his, his house. And when they looked through his house, they found this pistol frame. And then they called the police. I am not just fighting for my uh, hobby. I am not just fighting for my art collection. I am fighting for my very freedom. Ordinary, honest citizens who have come to fear the government and a law that no longer trusts them. Border crossings that have become a checkpoint for harassment. A return trip from a gun show can turn into hours of search and interrogation by Canada Customs agents. They told us that they were down there taking pictures of the license plates of the cars and monitoring us, law-abiding citizens, doing nothing wrong while we're in the States. And if they're doing this, what else are they doing? They're training with BATF agents, and that's how they're learning how to enforce the Canadian law a universal registration scheme that is cohesive. And Canadian gun owners believe they stand as living proof that registration is not the end. It's just the beginning of the end. The federal government of Canada has proven 
They've proven beyond any shadow of a doubt that confiscation is the agenda. Little by little, they're going to take all of our rights away from us, confiscate all of our guns, and we're going to be left with nothing. We believe that when they know where every one of our guns are, then they'll come and take every one of our guns. Canadian gun owners who know the stage has been set, their rights hang in the balance. A warning to Americans that the border separating them from us is just an imaginary line. Believe what's going to happen. It's coming. Uh, we've got the test waters here in Canada to prove it, and you're next on the list. If you give it an inch, you're going to lose a whole damn yard. Beware, because if it's happening here, it could happen down there. And it's pretty scary. Get off your ass and take part. Join the NRA. That's the best chance you have. If you view this problem as strictly a Canadian problem, you have your head in the sand. You have got to get behind your organizations that are defending your freedom. Without NRA, you would be sunk already.